What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. First and foremost, just want to give a huge shout out to everybody that's shown love and support so far. You know, I truly appreciate it starting this from nothing and uh, just excited to push out more content for you guys. And so the number one question that I got from a number of you was, uh, you know, how do you afford real estate? You know, how do you afford uh, to buy all these properties? You know, I was a young guy that hasn't saved much money yet. And so that kind of inspired me to start a new series. I'm going to call it uh, Broke Boy Real Estate, right? And it's going to teach you how to afford real estate on a budget. And for those of you that know me, you guys know that, you know, I don't come from a great amount of wealth. You know, I'm not bong or shot calling by any means. So it really forces you to maximize the money you do have and get creative with your financing. And so the number one concept that I wanted to illustrate to you was the idea of creative financing. And with creative financing, the sky is the limit here. You know, as long as it's legal and both parties, buyer and seller, agree to the terms, you can negotiate any kind of deal you want, really. So really, you just have to break the mold of thinking conventional financing is the only way to go. You know, conventional being going through the bank, having your credit pulled, putting 20% down and getting a loan. You know, there's, there's other ways to do it. And, it's hard to save, you know, if you're a normal American, it's hard to save 20% down for each property you purchase. And so using creative financing is probably the only way you're gonna be able to truly accelerate your property acquisition. And so what I wanted to do now is just drop a short list of possible creative financing strategies that you guys can implement. Yeah, let's do five, five is a good number. And so we'll use five strategies that you guys can implement. And this list by no means is an end all be all list either. Like I said before, creative financing, the sky's the limit. And so you just have to stimulate your creativity, whether you know you want to give them 10 camels or, or five magic beans, whatever you know you think would entice the seller to sell you his home. And so the first strategy that I kind of wanted to introduce real quickly is the idea of wholesaling. And wholesaling is probably the easiest and least uh, costly way to get into real estate because you don't even need money. It's just basically finding a motivated seller and then finding a motivated buyer and then, you know, be like Will Smith and Hitch and match make the two and you can collect the premium in between. Number two, another idea that you guys can implement is the idea of seller financing. And so with this method, basically the seller acts as a bank and you would just pay the seller you know, every month as if you were paying uh, a mortgage. But instead of paying a bank with a loan, you have a loan with the seller himself, which avoids, you know, the hassle of going through a bank entirely. Three, the third idea that I wanted to introduce to you guys is the idea of the option to purchase contract. And basically this is just a binding contract between you and the seller, which allows you to exercise your right to purchase uh, the property within a set amount of time. So let's say for example, you know, you don't have the money to purchase the property now, but you will in the future. Maybe you were irresponsible and you bought a Mustang with 29% interest. And so now you got to pay on that before you can afford to buy this house. And so now you have, you know, X amount of time in order to purchase this house at a locked in price, you know, which allows you to have the exclusive right to purchase as well. So nobody else can take this property, you know, while you're being financially irresponsible elsewhere. Number four. So the fourth idea that I want to introduce to you is the idea of a subject to. And with a subject to agreement, basically you're buying the property subject to the pre-existing mortgage already set in place. And so let's say the seller has a mortgage on the property and they just don't wanna deal with it anymore. You can basically assume that mortgage and make payments on it, even though it's still under his name. Now you have the deed to the house and you own the house, it's just, you know, you bought it under the pre-existing mortgage. So now that mortgage becomes your responsibility. And then lastly, number five, this last concept that I want to introduce to you is uh, the idea of using other people's money. And, you know, if you're like me, you don't have that much. You've only been working for a couple of years. And so maybe you don't have that much savings uh, to put on a down payment for a property. And so what you can do is use other people's money, whether that's in the form of partnerships, you know, you can partner with a buddy, go 50-50 on it, you know, so on and so forth. Um, you can use hard money, which you go to a hard money lender and they'll loan you, you know, a set amount of money with 
uh, interest and whatnot, and you'll just make payments on that. Um, and then the last one is private money. So let's say you know you have family or friends that are sitting with a large amount of cash in a savings or retirement account. Um, you can take a loan out and borrow that money from them and afford your properties that way. And I know I covered everything very you know, generally, um, but I just want you to know I'm covering each one of these topics individually in the series to come. And so, you know, if this interests you at all, if you like what you saw, please support by liking and subscribing. And just thanks for watching, guys. Until next time.